Hi, I'm Stephanie Raza. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates Go Out and Sketch a White Lion Sphinx Moth instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint the White Lion Sphinx Moth by applying what you learned in the step by step lesson. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. Today, I'm sketching from a video of a White Lion Sphinx Moth for demonstrative purposes. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time, relax, and observe. Hopefully you're out in nature and don't get too caught up if you think you've made any mistakes. Let's get started. So you want to apply what you learned in your step-by-step -step lesson. And it's great to have the art as a reference to help you when you're sketching. Because when you're sketching from an animal, it might be moving and you might not know exactly where some lines might go. But if you have the image that you've already created or the reference image, you can see some of those things and help use it as a reference for location. So first, just go ahead and draw some very rough sketches so that you make sure that the image actually fits on your page. So use some very light marks Again, oval for the overall body and head. And then kind of a triangle-like shape for the wings. And this just is getting the size so that you don't get it too big. So this body would have been too big if I had started from there. I wouldn't have been able to fit the wings on. So then you can start to add some more detailed shapes to kind of define the space a little bit more. So I can start, these wings are about the same size. So I can start adding it in. And this animal is moving its wings. So kind of have to pay attention to what it looks like at a certain moment and do your best you can. And this is where you can refer to the sizing and shape of this and this image to kind of help you out. And you're just doing a sketch, so it's not going to be exact. So don't worry too much about that. You're just going to get this onto the page. And in the video, you can see that the legs behind the wings, but I'm just going to do like we did with the, uh, step-by-step -step image and just draw on the leg. I'm just going to draw a line for it for now just to indicate where it's at. And then I'm going to start on the body because I'm not exactly sure where I ne this next wing will start. So I'm going to add some rough shapes for the body. And the defining part where the thorax is, is this, this part right here. And it's kind of an ovalish shape that kind of crescent comes down and that'll help as kind of a landmark shape to help me know where I need to add everything in the sizing of the different parts so where the wings are and where the, thor or the thorax meets the abdomen and how big it will be. Again, just drawing in some real quick shapes and nothing real detailed. And if this animal was to fly away, you'd want to have most of these defining shapes in here and then you can add in the details using what you know about the animal from the step-by-step. -step. but it's best just to be out there and observing the animal and getting this out onto the page quickly and not worrying too much about accuracy. So that's why I start with these shapes first. And you can redefine it a little bit if needed. I didn't really like the size of that shape and I'll probably leave 
erase these lines actually because they're a little dark and I might get confused. Just real quick. And I'm just, because I can, I'm looking at the shape of the wing again real quick. Um, comparing it to this one in direction and defining that a little bit more. Oops. And that basically works. Now I'm going to add some of the defining marks. So the antenna. And some of the stripes. And I'm just adding them in real quickly because if I was out sketching in the field that this animal could be leaving any moment and I would have to rely on this sketch. Again, get some landmark lines in, like this line across down here from the top to the bottom of the abdomen. And then it kind of probably going to use this because the animal is moving to figure out how many sections there are in that abdomen. So I'm starting to add some details like sectioning this out. And I may adjust, make other adjustments as needed here real quick. If that isn't exactly right, it's okay. It's just a sketch. And the location of those marks is probably not going to be exact. Maybe I added too many abdominal sections. That's okay too. If you have more time, the animal is not moving a lot. It's good to get those things right, but if it's moving a lot, you know. This is where you can kind of see that where the white and the black would be to help you while that animal's moving around to kind of add it in. Even how many abdominal parts. There's these little white spots, they don't have to be perfect. And then tan area underneath that we can see. And then most of this is lined a little bit dark. And then there's another line on the other side. And this is all seems a little bit big to me. So I'm gonna bring it in a little bit. And I'll erase that real quick. 
I don't really want to leave it in there. It's okay to erase a little bit. Just try to only erase lines that might be confusing for you. Try to leave the lines that don't really determine that. So like this line here is not gonna confuse me, so I'm just leaving it there just for speed. So now that I have this part, I think there, there's these little details in there as well. And I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. You may even have an animal that's in front of you not moving like this one. You can spend lots of time observing its different parts. And then I'll add some quick stripes in the wings. And add the location of these stripes might not be exactly right. And that's okay. This is just a sketch. I'm just getting a representation of this animal. At this point, if this animal flew away, I could use this for the coloring in order to, to paint it in. And even some of the details I just put in, I could add these onto here. And there are details on the wing that I can discern a little bit better because I have it here to refer to. And I'm just gonna color that in real quick just so that I remember those are black. It just helps me with being able to see it better. And now I can't really see the leg sections, so I'm just going to draw like this leg and knowing this is about where it's at and it's it's a bit off, so I'm going to erase it real quick, pre-draw a line for it, and then draw it in like copying my reference leg. And often you're gonna have to look at something else to refer to those tiny details anyway, even when you're out sketching. So a very rough sketch idea of this moth. And then clean it off. You can use your kneaded eraser at this point. Make sure you have a clean spot to kind of get rid of any marks or smudges you don't want. I'm also going to write in, because I have time right now, because I'm doing this from a composite video, White Lion Sphinx Moth and the scientific name, but it might be better to do these kinds of observations or writing in the name at the end if you're out sketching in the field. And even though this ended up being a little high, this would leave some space for me to make any kind of notes or observations down here, talk about the moth itself or my day or what's going on or how I'm feeling or whatever I might wanna to add to my nature journal. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop here with the drawing, keeping it very basic and then I'm going to add in, so I want to define this eye just a little bit more. And I'm going to use my reference as far as knowing where some of those marks would be because I can't really see in the video. 
and I'm gonna leave it just like this. And I'm going to go ahead and start adding the paints. So I'm gonna use the paints I mixed for my step-by-step -step lesson. I saved them, I just revived them with a little bit of water. And I also have my other paints here just in case I need them. If I need a little bit more paint or I need fresh paint for some reason. And I'm going to add all of these colors in a similar way as my step-by-step. -step. So I'm going to start with the Sphinx Moth Tan, the wettest, lightest. I'm going to test it on my paper. It's a little dark, so I'm going to add a little more water to it. Test that on my paper. Looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in a similar way as I did in my step-by-step. -step. So I have my step-by-step -step lesson here to help me out with this as well just to make it faster and easier. So I'm just adding this quickly. In very similar fashion and space as my step-by-step -step lesson. But I am referring to my moth that I'm painting from, the sketching from. quick this animal is moving and if I was out sketching you need to know how if you're out sketching to do this with the animals in front of you and moving and you don't want to worry too much and if it already flew away, you could just refer to your image to finish it. But it does help to have the animal in front of you. Maybe it's flying around and you can move to where it's at. Or you can wait for it to come back or... There's a lot of different situations which you might be able to still have it in front of you. But it's just a sketch, it doesn't have to be just right. So if it doesn't look exactly like the reference animal, the animal you're painting from, it's okay. You're just practicing and studying. It's a great thing to do if you're going to be just hanging out outside and, and relaxing or if you're going to do a complex painting of this animal down the road. So I've added that Sphinx Moth tan, so I'm gonna add the pink Make sure it's not too dark. Pretty dark. Add a little bit more water. It's not really dark enough. Looks pretty good. It looks fine. Well, it's a little dark. Sometimes finding the right color balance with water pigment to water balances. Well, it can be a little tricky. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. I think that's that's good enough. And we use the same technique I did with my step by step. So I'm going to paint out to about halfway and then clean my brush off and pull that paint to the edge to create a little bit of a gradient because it does get a little lighter as it goes to the edges of those hind wings. And it started too light, so I picked up a little bit more paint. Just bring that to do the same thing and bring the paint to the edges of those hind wings there. And take a little bit of this pink color and add it real quickly. It's not going to be quite as detailed as the step by step, it's a quick representation. So next I'm going to add the Sphinx Moth Black. And I'm just going to quickly add that. Again, not worrying too much about being super exact, just kind of getting it in. quickly onto the page. The more you practice, the better you'll get at all of this too. The more of the step-by-steps you do, the better you'll get. The more sketching you do out in the field, the better you'll get. start being able to observe and see things in a more detailed way as well. It's always great to write down anything you notice that onto your page. black wasn't quite black enough. I could have added more black to my palette to make it a little bit darker. So I'm just going to go this dried. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more over it. And I'm not going to add it in all the spots because in some areas, it's a little transparent on those wings. So I'm going to leave some of that transparency by just filling in some black a little sparingly on those wings. We're just getting this in real quick, I'm not being super exact about it. So next I'm going to add in the Sphinx Moth Burnt Sienna. And I'm going to just add that in basing. It's a little light. I might add a little bit more to my palette. So it looked good on my test paper, but when I put it here, it just wasn't able to pick up quite a dark enough color. Didn't have enough pigment, so I'm going to add some more by just taking it right out of my bottle there and adding it to my palette. Dabbing it on my towel. I want it to be pretty dark 
but I also want it to be able to move. So it needs to have enough water that it moves smoothly on the paper. That feels better. And it's dark. So I'm doing, because the animal is moving so much, I have to base this off of both my image, my reference image here, and the animal in front of me. Yeah, not worrying about being too exact, just kind of getting it in. And if I make a mistake and it gets into the white area, that's fine too. It's just a sketch, just a representation, a study. So there is a little bit, again, just kind of basing this more on my reference image. There's a little bit of this burnt sienna color on the bottom there. Then there's quite a bit on the head, which I can see in my video. And I'll add a little bit to each antenna. And just kind of striping under the eye on the head. Define it based on how what your animal's doing or how you see it at this point. And I feel like this is a little darker than my step by step right here on my the moth I'm painting from right now, so I'm going to add that in there. And then I'm going to take that really wet light color and just kind of add that to the upper, upper abdominal area here. It's a little dark, so I dabbed off on my, brunt, on my towel and then kind of move it like a gradient because I put it on a little darker than I wanted. And then pick up a little bit more. I should have probably tested it out on my test paper first, but I didn't. Then that's what happens. You kind of get the wrong color. clean off my brush. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of this color to the leg. Alright, now I'm going to clean off my brush. Yeah. 
and I'm going to add this gray color first just because that's I didn't not the step I took with the step by step it's but I'd like to add it right now. And just really roughly adding that in there. And And now you could make about this is you could say the animal was flapping its wings. I did not get great detail work on those wings. You could say the animal left and weren't, you weren't able to do a lot of little things. So um, you can write whatever you want on the outside here, giving explanations as to why you did what you did in your sketch or what the animal was doing or how long it was there. This moth is drinking from a flower, so maybe you want to talk about that and what kind of flower, what the day was like if you're sketching outside. Next, I'm going to add this deep brown color. I'm going to add a little more water to it. Test it on my paper. It's supposed to be pretty dark. And again, I'm going to do what I did before and add it based on my image and my video, my composite video, my reference animal. Because although this is similar, it's not exactly the same as. original step-by-step -step image. It gets a little bit lighter, so I dabbed it off on my towel. Quick representation again, so I'm just trying to get this in here real quick. Don't get too caught up with the details, it's mostly for observing whatever it is you would like to focus on about this animal or your time outside. And maybe you're just practicing getting paint and painting quickly. That's great too. Clean off my brush. Turn my palette around again. I'm just going to add a little bit more of the Sphinx Moth Pink. Brighten up the wing area again. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Kind of paint it in the darker areas. And then clean off my brush and then take that clean wet brush and kind of move that paint to the edges to create a little bit of a gradient. 
because it is darker in some spots and then it gets a little bit lighter. So I'm doing that on both sides. And I'll take some more of that and the pink on this moth is pretty light, so I'm not gonna, on the abdomen, so I'm not gonna add too much, just a tiny bit. And I think the color of the proboscis is pretty dark, so I'm gonna take, I think a little bit of this burnt sienna and kind of add it to the proboscis. Maybe that's because of the shadow from the flower. And I think I like where this paint is at. It still looks really messy. I'll bring it together with the ink lines. Oh, actually I'm gonna add a little bit of color. I realize I have some color in the eye in my step-by-step -step image and I'd like to add a little bit more color to this eye. So I'm gonna add a little color. Now clean off my brush and you can go back and add more paint or whatever you need to do. So if you go out and you sketch this and you want to add a little bit of paint and ink later, you can do that. Just make sure you let it dry in between layers of paint or ink. And so the last thing I'm going to do is add some ink lines and I start with the tiny 005 micron and it's a black and that's just to start defining where the lines are. And if I accidentally do something I don't like, I can change it and modify it pretty easily since it's so thin. So if this animal had already left, you can base a lot of of the drawing on your reference image, kind of like you do with your step-by-step -step at the end. So really applying a lot of the techniques you're practicing in your step-by-step. -step. When you're sketching in nature, a lot of times you have to kind of do things quickly or make up different things based on what you already know about an animal. And those kinds of things can be noted on the outside. You can say, hey, I based this on this animal left and I based this on my knowledge or the image. And now I'm going to add the oh wait black micron. And be careful because this one does smudge. I'm gonna add some thick lines. There's the black oh eight. And I'm kinda gonna add these anywhere. I feel like it needs some defining between one side to the other, like here on the body. I think it needs a little defining separating it from the wing or I might add it to parts that I feel are a little bit harder or in shadow at this feels a good spot to put it the edge of this wing seems pretty hard in the video so does this edge so all the outer edges of the wings and the video look very hard. So I'm going to add this thicker line to kind of mimic that. And I'm going to add it to the bottom of the abdomen here too. Maybe just into here as well. This area looks kind of lighter to me, a little fluffier, so I'm going to leave it. And really just kind of some of the hind wing, but not all of it. And the eye a little bit more. Of course the antenna. 
I might not, just being careful not to smudge any wet ink. And I may add, I'm gonna actually write in the common name right now as well. It's kind of thick, thicken it up a little bit. And lastly, I'm gonna add a little bit more uh, with the O1 micron, kind of thickening up a few of these thinner hairlines. This area here. Maybe this leg line. Uh, maybe this abdominal lines a little bit. I don't want them super thick, but I did want to define them a little bit more. Again, it's a sketch. I might have too many. I haven't really counted these abdominal sections. I might have too many, but that's something that I could write on the sides. That if I did this quickly, it wasn't really paying attention to the abdominal sections. Or you could look it up later and see if you got the right number of abdominal sections. Good way to learn a little bit more about this animal. And I'm gonna add a few little more hair lines here. And then just kind of look at it a little bit if you have the chance. But I like where it's at. I think that it looks good. So I'm gonna leave it like this. So we're done. Great job observing your world. Also make sure to check out naturesketchcrate.com for regular updates through our newsletter and to shop for future crates.